I'm going to be in trouble. I know it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of our Let's Play series. This is Etho. I am back from the dead here. Uh, sorry. Sorry about the upload schedule lately, guys. I have uh, been sick. If you didn't see my post on Twitter. Do they call them posts? Tweets? My tweet on Twitter? <laughs> uh, I've had uh, I've had the flu. Blech. The last few days here. Still not over it, but I thought I'd try to get a video out for you guys today because I know you've been waiting. So, let's get to it here, guys. Uh, last episode, we looked into this whole uh, bunny hole concept. And you guys seem to really, really like it. So, we might try to build a base using this today. I'm not sure yet, though. Um, but, yeah, we looked into some of the ways this works and some tricks with it. Got some good feedback from you guys, too. Apparently, there's more tricks to it than I even realized. Like, one of the big rules I thought here was you had to have a transparent block above you. So, if we look into... Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see, actually. Like, you got to have, like, a slab or glass block or something non-solid above you. I thought it was a rule, but apparently there's a way around that. Um, oh. <laughs> As I fall here, I have to press the space bar, so sometimes I, I prematurely press it like that. But if you get really good at it, it looks really cool. You just, like, automatically go into the hole here. Okay, so let's try this. Apparently, you can just force your way through the solid area so like because there's a dirt block above there it's not really letting me go into that space but if i hold sprint yeah look at that you can actually force your way in and then once you're in the solid blocks i think it, it allows you to keep going here right let's see what happens if we transition to stone it's all dirt here's some stone yeah you can still going even if you change block types so that's kind of cool that makes this way simpler, <laughs> like way easier to get around, because you you only got to mine one block then, instead of two, every block you go forward. And another trick you guys showed me here is if you have a non-solid block, so like a slab, of course you can then move into that slab area, but if you try to go forward, you get kind of get locked, you got to force your way through, which is pretty slow when you try to do that. There's apparently a cool way of getting by all that issue, though, so I got it... Uh, free spot over there if we have a piston here and then we oh wrong way <laughs> go right way piston wrong way i wonder if we cannot place it the right way oh no there we go okay so if we push that dirt block above us while we're in the the non-solid block i think then it's going to automatically transition us to the solid block and then you don't have that really long uh, wait time to get through here like this you know so let's go ahead and try that. Oh, it, it actually forced me out of that spot. Okay, maybe I didn't do that right. Okay, I'm going to hold forward this time. Or left, I'll hold left. Yeah, there you go. You go right through then. There's no wait time, so that's cool. Okay, a little bit of redstone here. <laughs> I just wanted to see, can you tra make this transition a little bit easier? So we're going from the, the slabs to the solid pink clay block here. If we do this, it takes like five seconds or so, and you got to hold control, and you know there's a little bit to it. So I set this up so if you put a pressure plate down, it's going to extend the sticky piston. The slime blocks will move this uh, pink clay over top uh, where our head is. So you'll notice this is going to switch to the pink clay block when our head's there. Uh, even still, though, if I hold forward, it's not letting me through here. So that's and it resets too, which is nice. Um, what you got to do is hold sprint, and then it lets you through. And you'll notice it's much faster than just doing it the other way, like just forcing your way through. It's like one second instead of five. But there's an even better way, it seems. If you also move the block behind behind you, get some more slime down there, then you don't even need to press sprint. You can just hold forward. Super smooth. That's cool. That's the way we're going to do it. And all I did here is from that that uh, pressure plate, got a little repeater, and then it goes up to the piston here. Very simple. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'm getting a little distracted here, guys. But I just I just realized something. We can use this for transports, uh, which may or may not be cool. Well, it will be cool. I don't know how effective it would be though. So for example, it tries to move us towards an open airspace. 
Like, if there's room for our whole body, it's going to try to push us to that area automatically. So if I break this block, it's going to move us there. But if I replace it before we get there, we don't leave the, the solid block mode here. Okay, well, you could probably get it to work. Is this not going to be very good? It's way too slow. Just tried it out a little bit here. I didn't fine-tune the, the timing or anything here, but I don't think it's going to really be good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's get to the base building here, guys. I have spent some time uh, looking around, doing a little bit of planning. I think I got it figured out what I want to do now for this mini base. Uh, if we're going to be building a base, we should actually have it serve some function. Because if we just build it like around the man cave area, never going to use it. <laughs> it's just going to be for show. And I kind of want to build like an outpost, where a base that has a little bit of everything in it. Um, so we're going to go a little ways off here. And then if we ever decide to build out this area, or around this area, then we will have like a source of... Maybe some mini farms and that sort of thing. Uh, is the plan, anyways. And it turns out, if we go straight this way... I did a little bit of scouting. Where are we at here? Oh, did I pass it already? Might have passed it. I thought it was, like, straight. Maybe I gotta go... Oh, no, I think it is a little bit this way. This is an area we've been to in the past... Yeah, right over here, right over here. So this is actually one of our strongholds in the world. So this will give us a nice, quick uh, way of getting to the end and back to spawn. Um, like if we want to, if we ever, if we ever want to do that. Where's the way down, guys? Young Etho wasn't good at marking things. Oh, double torch. There we go. <laughs> Man, that was not uh, not an easy thing to see. No ladders. No ladders. What was wrong with Young Etho? I don't even know. Does this actually go to the portal? It does. Okay. I never even opened it, though. Okay, I brought a few ender eyes. It looks like I don't have enough, though. Oh, snap. But we're going to try to build our base in such a way that uh, it'll also connect to this end portal, and we'll have a, a quick way back if we want to. Oh, me. Oh, my. This is actually a really nice area. I was just looking around a bit. Like, especially here, we got this, like, uh, pool down below. Then we got nice flat spots up here, kind of an arch going around. Uh, then there's this big hill in front of us. And on the other side is where the end portal is, down down over there. So, I don't know how extensive of a base we're going to make here, but there's definitely room for potential. It's a nice area. Lots of hills, lots of nice hills, rolling hills here. I think where I'm going to start it, like if we want to make something pretty big, we'll want to go off that way and we'll want to go off this way. So this is probably around the middle-ish area. And I think it'd be cool, like we want to do some tunnels. Maybe eventually, though, we'll build outside here and try to make the outside look nice too. Uh, I think we're going to try start over over around here. We'll build like a little balcony thing. All right, today's going to be a bit of a test too because I have, I have, uh, what should I call it? Ender chest. Explain, explain what I mean. Shulker boxes. I have sort of uh, put one of everything in the shulker boxes now, so hopefully I don't have to cut quite as often when I'm building and stuff. If I ever need to get an item, like right now, I need spruce wood, spruce slabs. So we have a stairs and slab shulker box now, and look at that. Spruce slabs right off the bat. So I'm going to make maybe a 5 by 4. Could be cool. Actually, let's go into the hill a little bit here. 5 by 4 sort of platform here. All right. And we're just bit, we're just making like a balcony. That's going to start tunneling into the side of the hill here. And then we'll go from there. Um... <laughs> Yes, do something like this, bring it up, and go around. Should we do another pillar here? Aha, so I had to cut the video already, <laughs> uh, but I think it's looking okay so far. I think that's a good spot for that, so let's continue here. I realized if uh, if we're doing some building here, I should really think of something to talk about. 
Uh, so I just took a moment here to think of something. Because otherwise I'm just going to be like, okay, place a block here. Ooh, that looks nice. Doopity boop boop. <laughs> so let's let's actually try to have a bit of a conversation here today. Uh, I think I'm going to go over here. Doopity boop boop. <laughs> uh, yes. Today we're going to talk about sickness, okay? Getting sick and whose, whose fault is it? All right. So in part, I'm going to blame myself. You know, it, it kind of sucks. I just got sick, actually, uh, in the summertime, probably not even four months ago. I got a really bad flu in the summer that knocked me out for weeks, and I just got sick again here. This one's not so bad, though, at least. Let's go for... We're going to put a little bit of a roof over this. I think we'll go for maybe acacia, or we're going to try maybe sandstone, red sandstone here. Yeah, let's give this a try. Um, but, you know, I kind of blame myself because I don't get the flu shot. <laughs> so maybe that's something I should do. I'm not sure. Something I oft often contemplate. Mm hmm. Okay, I think we can do that. That's fine. Some of you might be like, what are you, crazy? Why don't you just get the flu shot? Isn't it free in Canada? <laughs> I think it is, actually. I think it's covered by our health care, which is pretty cool. Uh, some downsides. Obviously, if you get the flu shots, you got to get a shot. You got to get a needle. That's not fun. Who wants to do that? Not me. Uh, you have to go and actually get it and take time out of your day. That's that's not fun. Um, one concern of mine, though, is if I don't get it, I might actually like get other people sick. Because <laughs> if I get the flu, then I might start spreading it. That's That's not a good thing. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I'm kind of curious. What do you guys think about the flu shot? Do you get it? Do you not get it? Why or why not? Uh, if you do get it, here, here's a big thing. If you get it, do you still get the flu sometimes? Or if you get it, does it sometimes seem like it infects you? <laughs> like, uh, like right after you get the flu shot, you get the flu. Does that happen? Uh, like, I'm not sure. I, I haven't really looked into it too much. Because... Um, because if the dosage is too high or if your immune system's weak, I could see that happening, right? Is that a thing? I think I've heard of people getting that. But yeah, curious what, what you guys will say in the comments about it. I'll give you uh, the big reason, though, why I don't get the flu shot personally. A little bit of a story time with Etho here. I'm looking for glowstone, I think. These shulker boxes, they're great, but uh, they do kind of make a mess here. <laughs> Starting to get quite a few of them here. Also need misc stuff. Alright. So yeah, apparently uh, my family did get the flu shot quite regularly. Up until I was two years old, something happened. They gave me the flu shots, and I had a very bad reaction to it, uh, is what I've been told. Uh, obviously, I was two years old. I'm too young to remember it myself. Uh, but this is just what I've been told. Had a bad reaction to it. Uh, apparently, it changed my personality, they, my parents told me. Like, I used to be a really good, wonderful baby. And then I got the flu shot. And I became very cranky, like, immediately. Very cranky and very stubborn. And that didn't go away. It, it lasted. I remember when I was young, <laughs> I was a stubborn kid. Like, you could not make me do anything I didn't want to do. Uh, I think up until I was four or five, maybe even longer. I can't, I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, a little fun fact, though. A little story time here. <laughs> I, uh, I was very stubborn up until, I think, four or five, and uh, my parents kind of got sick of it. They had enough of it. It's like, okay, we got to do something about this. This can't keep going on. You know, I should have maybe moved this forward. Yeah, so they were like, okay, we're, we got to break this kid. We got to stop this. So what what ended up happening? One day I dropped a box of crowns on the, on the ground, right? And I refused to pick it up. Like there was no way I was going to pick up these crowns. Um... <laughs> So it's like, okay, give him a spanking. It's like, okay, are you going to pick up the crowns now? No. Give him another spanking. Are you going to pick up the crowns now? No. And this went on and on for, I was told, 
like three hours, two or three hours, I believe. Um, ended up getting 37 spankings, I think it was, in a row. <laughs> and finally, finally they broke me. And I was like, okay, I'll pick up the crowns. And then after that, I was, I was a good kid again. I wasn't stubborn anymore. All right. Well, I think we got our balcony pretty much figured out here. I worked out some more details off camera. So I tried mixing in acacia wood in the in the sandstone there. I think that looks okay. Then I added a like a brace at the bottom there. Triple brace. Kind of staggered them as well. I think that looks cool. And some flower pots and some carpet. I think we're going to go for orange and and blue colors for this base. Those two go pretty good together. Got some orange tulips here. Uh huh. I tried mixing in oak here. I don't know if that's a really good idea, but we'll try it for now. <laughs> Let's actually get to the crawling part of the base now, the, the tunneling part. So this is going to serve as the entrance exit, or one of them. There'll probably be many of them. Uh, and it'll be something that hopefully looks good in case we develop the outside of this area too, not just like tunneling the whole time um, but let's let's get to tunneling here all right so maybe we will keep the carpet going and here's the thing though I'm not quite decided what I want to do like urgh, we can do this if we're if we're limited to a one high area we're very uh, we're not gonna be able to do much detail right <laughs> oh I got pushed out darn it Maybe we should try to go for the too high. I think it'll look better in general, and then some. We might have some tighter spots that are only, only one high. Let's maybe go for. For about this shape, two by three, two tall, three wide. For, we'll do like a bit of a tunnel to begin with here at the base. Uh, maybe maybe let's build out a stone. S stone goes really good with the cyan wool color. We could do that along the side and maybe just go like five blocks and then we'll have another uh, break here so let's add some dark wood like that <laughs> uh, my commentary is so good this is why we don't do building guys I can't like think and build at the same time I think a lot of youtubers have this problem um, it's very hard to be creative at, and like talk at the same time all right, I got an idea here for this little section entrance to our base. We're going to actually use fire, I think, with this base. That's going to give us an orange color to mix in with the blue <laughs> when we're not actually using orange. I'm sure we'll use a lot of orange tulips as well. But yeah, let's go netherrack both sides here. We'll light this on fire. Like so, I think that's outside of range. Yeah, that's outside of range of the carpets. And then... Brought some grills, put those in the front, and then just probably cobblestone. Kind of like that. Sure, let's build this up. And we'll slope the ceiling maybe. How should we do it? Well, we definitely need a slab here, otherwise we'll stand up. Uh, I, guess, I guess we got to use uh, stairs then. So we'll do stairs over here and over here and slab over here, kind of give it that shape. See what that's like. So let's go ahead and do this and finish up here. Okay, flower pots over there and over there and over there and over there. Okay, maybe what would look nice? Is my orange tulips? Is that gonna be too many orange tulips, I wonder? That's quite a few orange tulips. <laughs> All right, so we got fire, we got orange tulips, great. So now this next section here, I think we're gonna go for more of an intersection. I want to be able to turn left now and start going that way. Let's see, if we go this way, how far till we hit the surface? Pretty soon here, so we might need to start going downhill as well. So we kinda wanna go off off that way because that's where the end portal's gonna be. Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the keys to this building style, when you're in miniature mode here, <laughs> is like this is one block tall, this is two blocks tall, this is three blocks tall. So we're like in a three block tall room, even though it's a block and a half. Everything gets shrunk down half the size because of our, our lower perspective. Um, so to get more detailed, like 
Minecraft is very limited. <laughs> uh, I tried some something here though. You can see you can mix stone brick and cobblestone very nicely together. I think this is cool. Um, so you can get more detailed by texture mixing. And also uh, they, they both have stairs and slabs with the block type. So that's good. So I put some stairs here as well. And this room fe feels very detailed, very finished to me now. So let's go ahead and move on here. So this next room, the intersection, I think I want this to kind of go something like that and then off this way as well. And then the middle here, we're going to have a drop. Um, so maybe let's go for some dark oak just for now. Probably a three by three hole here. I would like it if we could look down there without actually falling down. I don't know if that's going to be possible, but we'll try it out. And do that. Okay, and maybe maybe get some fences around this too. Should we? Well, let's just do it like this. All right, we might mix in some stairs with this dark oak just for more detail as well. But let's go for this for right now. And stairs around here, and then every corner we might go up like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue on with our uh, sickness talk. The The main person I blame for me getting sick is all of you. <laughs> Everybody but me. Uh, because when you get sick, it's usually because uh, you're around somebody else that is sick, right? And they pass it on to you. That's the way it goes. That's the way it is. Um, so my... My thing that I want to say today, something we don't really do in society is sickness shaming. Like where you you really rag on someone like, oh, why are you out sick? That's, that's such a bad thing to do. You're going to get everybody else sick. To a certain extent, I think that's a good thing. But uh, you don't want to take it too far, obviously. Uh, rather, the better thing is we should all be uh, a little more careful when we are sick, I think. It's something we all do. We go out when we're sick and we get other people sick um, just because we, we can't stand to stay at home or we got something important to do. But a lot of people, you know, it's like they, they really don't need to go out, but they're still going out when they, they're sick. And to you, I say, stay at home. <laughs> if you don't absolutely have to be out when you're sick, don't do it. Just stay at home. Get better so you don't get everybody else sick. Ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Hmm. Very, very ugly indeed. <laughs> so I've been uh, experimenting with this intersection room. Not really liking it too much. I think we're going to go for a redesign. Uh, whoops. So I've learned uh, maybe a few things here, though. I think just, like, avoid the window for right now, the ugly window and some of the other weird stuff. Just the size of the room, like the shape of it, might be a bit on the large scale. Uh, when you're at this perspective. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks from there to there. I think we should maybe keep rooms at the most five blocks. Would feel a lot better, a lot more cozy. This is this, uh, like I wanted this to feel like a fairly big room, but uh, we, gotta, we gotta cramp it down a bit more. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> this episode is getting a little bit long, so I decided to make some uh, progress off camera here. Went for a, a different take this time, so check it out. We got like a beautiful nature room here. Oh, look at this. So nice. <laughs> nature builds are my favorite theme in this game, if you guys don't know. Like, any time I can build out of nature, I just love it. It's so easy. To, or I find it so easy, because there's so many block choices you can use. Uh, so, it is actually pretty challenging building small, though. I gotta say, like, every single block really makes a huge difference on the overall look. Um, so, one thing I found really helped was using trodden dirt here. So you have these little little bump ups every so often. And that adds a lot to the overall chaos or the, the overall things that break up your eye here as you look compared to when it was like all grass here. Um, yeah, I think it's quite nice. Turned out okay. <laughs> Doesn't really do much. This is more of an intersection room. But I did put in like a little fishing station. 
we can get our fishing rod here. Let's see if this actually works. Can we fish in small mode? Looks like we can. Oh yeah, fresh water. Fresh fishies? No fishies? They fixed the fishing in 1.11, by the way, so the bobber actually settles where it's supposed to go instead of, like, up in the air a block or two, <laughs> which is pretty nice. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get any fishies. Oh, here we go. Yeah, except we can't actually get it. Darn. So you got a secret sea lantern there. If I go down, I can't get back up. <laughs> so not the best place to do fishing, actually. Um... What else? Got a brewing station here. I tried putting a trap door up here. I was hoping you could still like stay underneath that, but uh, it, you do go out of uh, tunneling mode, so that's not that might not work there actually. Well, anyways, guys, I think we should probably call the episode here for today. So let's get to the comments. It says Etho, hurry up and play Terraria 1.34. New items and dungeons. Go wake up Zitsu's channel. Yes. <laughs> uh, I checked it out right when it came out. 1.34. When did we play me and Zistu? I think, or Zistu and I. Proper grammar. Come on. Uh, I think it was 1.32, right? So I missed the 1.33 patch totally. Uh, honestly, like I played it, I think, 10 hours. Like right when it came out, the 1.34. And within those 10 hours over a few days or whatever. Uh, I didn't find anything new, I don't think, except I noticed the deserts had storms now, but I didn't really notice any changes, so I don't think it's really warranted to start a brand new playthrough <laughs> with just the, the last two patches or so. Um, maybe it's maybe you have to get the hard mode first, I'm not sure, but I didn't find anything new. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I am hoping that Terraria Overworld or whatever is eventually going to come out, or Overwatch, or Terraria something, with an O. <laughs> but it got delayed. Uh, it sounds like they started working on it, or they, they posted something on it recently that they're still working on it. So hopefully eventually it gets released, and who knows, we might play that. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have ideas for the new base on how we can add some variety to it and whatever... Please let me know in the comments. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.